In 2015, when uh, I joined 21C, I was asked to describe my most memorable dining experience. And I immediately reflected on a meal that I had in Japan when I worked there briefly. Um, one Friday afternoon, I left work early and traveled, um, which button do I use here? Hang on. Traveled from Osaka to Koyasan, which is a mountain community of Buddhist temples. There's more than 100 Buddhist temples there. And um, it was a two hour train ride from Osaka to Koyasan, a cable car ride up the mountain. Um, the cable cars, the temple of that experience sort of changed my, my frame of mind. The mountain and the temple certainly were a change of environment from the city. But the food and the lodging were really what were the most transformative uh, experience. But here's the thing, the, um, and, and please excuse my, my uh, crude travel photos. Um, the food and the lodging were not luxe, they were not extravagant, they were simple, they were stripped down, and the service was warm and deliberate and purposeful and thoughtful. And um, the lodging at Koyasan is, is actually part of the temple, uh, so it supports and reflects the community there, it reflects the community of monasteries. The food is created by the residents of those monasteries, so it, it nourishes both the residents as well as uh, guests, visitors, and pilgrims to the temples. Uh, and together, they, they reflect and support the communities that they're, that they're in. So for me, uh, so I arrived at the temple, found my way to my room, and then made my way to, to the common area where, where dinner was served. Dinner was, uh, dinner was a traditional Japanese style of cuisine based on the balance of five colors and five flavors with seasonable, seasonal vegetables and, and wild plants. Again, it, the setting was simple, um, the service was warm, and, and the food was excellent. And in combination, it made for a very memorable and, and, and sticky experience for me, if you will. 21C has a sticky quality to it as well, and so today I'm going to share a bit with you about, um, about the 21C brand. When I, so that question was asked of me in 2015. That's when I started uh, at 21C. Uh, the experience at Koyasan still resonates with me today, and the experience resonates with 21C projects for a couple reasons. The simplicity of the environment, the manner of the service, the novelty, obviously the, the meal in Japan was, was a very new thing for me, so the novelty of the experience and then the ties to the community. 21C is a, a, a multi-venue contemporary art museum combined with a hotel rooted in southern hospitality um, and a chef-driven chef -driven restaurant. Um, we were founded in uh, Louisville, Kentucky uh, by our visionary founders, Steve Wilson and Laura Lee Brown, whose mission was to make their own contemporary art collection accessible and available to the public, uh, as well as to revitalize a part of downtown Louisville that had been um, long neglected. This is 21C Louisville. Our corporate offices are half, halfway down the block. But at the time, in 2006, when they opened, this, these, these blocks were boarded up and unoccupied, and it's now called Museum Row. Our museum is open 24-7, 365. It's open to both our hotel guests and the public. It's uh, curated by our, by our chief curator, Alice Grace Deitz, and our museum team. We have rotating exhibitions at each of our uh, hotels. The service is, is rooted in the spirit of yes. We say yes to our guests. We say yes to each other. And our food and beverage is all locally inspired, chef-driven, and independently branded. So as I said, in 2006, we opened our, our first property in Louisville, Kentucky, which is shown, um, which is shown with the red penguin there. Um, we are now nine properties, Chicago being our most recent, um, with our 10th under construction in St. Louis. So this is our most recent project, which we opened just before everything shut down. This is Chicago. Um, at its core, 21C is interested in creating rich experiences and emotional connections with our guests. Um, it is a destination for locals, and, we, and it supports and builds the communities that we're in. 
The museum is the medium that we create re resonance for our guests. It's our form of hospitality. Um, art is around every turn, and it's the way that we create conversations with our guests and create memorable experiences. We invite people to grab a drink, walk through the galleries. Um, art infuses everything we, that we do. Again, it's around every corner, and it's off, often the source of lively conversations with friends and family, as well as strangers that, that, that you meet. And our spaces inspire a sense of discovery and curiosity. Um, our spaces are simple because we're a museum. The intent is that the art is the foreground and the architecture supports that environment and enhances that experience. But it changes. This is an image on the left and right of our lobby, lobby gallery in 21C Louisville. Our exhibitions change. We typically have an inaugural exhibition when we open a new property, uh, and then those rotate around to the, various, um, to the various locations. Our chief curator, again, sort of uh, designs the show, if you will, around contemporary issues. Thanks, Michael. Around contemporary issues, um, and that environment changes. So for our regular guests, it's a unique experience um, uh, every, not every time you come back, but as these shows revolve. <laughs> this is Fat Bat. Um, he, he's, he's in the fitness center at our Bentonville property. Hopefully helps get you through that last mile or at least puts a smile on your face as you try to anyway. But, so the museum and art are the medium for us. Other brands, other hospitality brands have other mediums. Um, uh, but today what I'm going to talk about is a little bit how we think about design and art um, to create that form of hospitality and create a, a stickiness with our guests. And I'm going to categorize it in, in four ways. First is the pursuit of less. Finding uh, restraint in the architecture that we do so that the experience can be front and center and enhanced. Second is creating tension. Um, Eight of the nine open properties are historic buildings where we, where we did adaptive reuse. And so we have a rich architectural legacy and rich history in those buildings, um, but we want to introduce something new and contemporary. So in, the, in that exercise, there's a tension or balance between old and new, sometimes between detail and ornament and simplicity and refinement, so we try to create a tension. Art and architecture, we also, at every property, we do site-specific art installations where we find an interplay between uh, an art installation and, and, and the architecture. Uh, and I'll tell you a bit about that. And then lastly is the tie to the community, to, to make a place to become a destination in the market that we're in, but also to reflect the place and be part of the conversation locally and be locally inspired. So starting with the first. There's, a, there's a, an idea in developmental psychology that we, as people, can't help but assign a, a sort of essence to objects. And in, um, in uh, philosophy, essentialism is the view that um, objects have, have a set of attributes. This is, this is a penguin from the artist collective Cracking Art Group. Uh, Cracking Art Group focuses on themes such as regeneration, and sustainability and the transformation of materials. Um, the penguin has become a sort of symbol for 21C, somewhat by, somewhat by accident. The, the penguins were at the first opening in Louisville, um, and they, they, they have a, there's something about them, an essence, if you will, that provokes curiosity and discovery and f fun. Uh, museum experiences don't have to be serious. They don't have to be austere. They don't need to be intimidating. There's something fun and engaging about the penguin that we find our guests like to interact with. So, and you'll find them throughout the museum, you'll find them throughout the hotel, and it draws our guests into the, uh, into the galleries and through the museum and encourages them to interact with the art. We have a uniquely colored penguin at each of our properties, um, and there will be a, a new one uh, at 21C St. Louis when we open. So our spaces are simple. They are, our public space is a museum, um, in, in some ways it's traditional in that way, or I should say in some ways we display art in a traditional way, but this is different than maybe some of the other institutions that you and I are used to visiting. Our museums are open to the public. Um, 
And so in that way, they're, they're public space. They are part of the public realm. We, again, we invite you to grab a drink uh, and walk through the, walk through the galleries. Um, and we find because it's the public realm and not institutionalized, um, that it often provokes the unexpected, lively conversation and sort of transient scenarios that you wouldn't have in a traditional museum or a traditional lobby or gallery. Um, this is a view of our pre-function space in Kansas City, which was a historic hotel building. Again, you see that, it, you see that it's very simple, which re leads me to my next topic, which is um, simple is not easy to do. And uh, when we get these historic buildings, it's often rich with architectural language, architectural fabric, history of the neighborhood, history of the city. And we, we challenge ourselves and we challenge our design teams to engage with that and mine that and, and find that information in order to find inspiration. But we don't want to just imitate that or reflect that because that would be nostalgic or just, just replicating the past. We want to find ways to introduce something new. Um, a colleague shared a podcast with me recently, which I thought was relevant. And it was, uh, there's an uh, engineer who studies developmental behavior, behavioral science. And he was building a bridge with his three-year-old son uh, out of Legos. At some point, the, the bridge was uneven. The structural supports were different heights. So the, the father, the engineer, turned around to grab a block. By the time he turned back around, his three-year-old son had evened out the bridge by removing a block. But so the point of the story is that as designers, as creators, we often try to solve problems by adding to, uh, by creating. And sometimes the best solution, not always, but sometimes the best solution is, that, is actually to take away and to simplify. Um, so we're given this rich uh, set of characteristics and attributes when we, when we move into these, these buildings. Um, all of our buildings, eight of the nine, which are historic, are all tax credits, so we have certain uh, constraints that we are required to follow. Um, but we also are, have been able to strip some things out, uh, simplify some of the space so that the architectural language can be celebrated and respected, but we can also introduce something new. So on the left, what you're seeing is what became our main gallery in Kansas City, um, the ballroom. We had to excavate the floor and rebuild that and one by one uh, reconstruct the mosaic tile floor. And on the right is uh, our project in Nashville, again, uh, to create a, a double height ballroom space. Um, there was some stripping away. This is a, our project in Lexington, the, the entry, the arrival experience. You can see the architecture. We preserved it. We restored it. The historic plaster ceilings, the, the stone and marble walls, so that the installation from Soft Lab could be um, foreground and have the most significant impact in the space. This is also 21C Lexington, very simple architecture, the gallery walls, but then there's a contemporary language, language that was introduced with that gallery stair that winds through the, the architectural fabric. This is 21C Louisville, which was actually a combination of three different buildings. This is a light well in the interior of the building um, that you can look through from one side to the other. And this is our first project in Louisville, the, the main gallery. So the third component is art and architecture. Um, with every one of our projects, we, f we look for an opportunity to do a site-specific installation. And um, that may be one installation, it could be three, but that's an art installation that becomes permanent to the, bu to the building and part of the building asset. This is Oklahoma City. This was on the guest room floors. It's an installation by the artist uh, Sutton Barris Cullen. Um, you, leave, you always leave me wanting more is the name of it. But he was inspired by the industrial history of the building. It was a former Model T assembly plant um, and the mid-century commercial uh, signage that you can still th see throughout Oklahoma City. In Louisville, this is our restaurant, Proof, on Main. Um, the artist group Fallen Fruit was commissioned to create a totally immersive experience. Um, Fallen Fruit focuses on uh, narrative histories and geography in their work, and so everything in this installation is um, reflective of Louisville or the surrounding region. 
both from the selection of uh, chandeliers and light fixtures to the frames to the images, any ephemera or materials in the show are from uh, Louisville or the surrounding area. The wallpaper is, is custom um, uh, based on native flora in the region and it's sort of based on um, the Cherokee creationist myth is inter interwoven in there. And then because this is a design and construction group, I thought I'd share just a little bit about process. This, is a, this was an installation in Kansas City by the artist group Luftwerk out of Chicago. This is the arrival experience. You're looking um, towards the front door out at the street. And a couple before and after. So the image on the left, you've got your back to the front door looking towards what would be our lobby gallery and reception desk. And the images on the right, are before and after looking in the other direction, looking back towards the, towards the street. So you can, see we, um, you can see the kind of architectural vocabulary that was there, and you can also see that we had to actually remove a floor, remove a stair, put in a ramp because there was an elevation change between the front door and the lobby gallery. On the left, these are our architects doing some, some final measurements after mechanical was put in place in the walls, and then the, the gallery walls were put in uh, after, this is our super Ron doing final inspections before punch list, but you can see the gallery walls in place and the, the ceiling um, has been restored. We work with the design team uh, and the artists during design to get the infrastructure for technology, power data, all those things in place uh, when we buy out the project so that we can, we don't have any major surprises when we go to do the site specific work. And so, you see some of the design drawings on the upper left and upper right, and then the, the final installation. So lastly is about the, the ties to the community. Again, we like to, we like to um, be a destination for locals, and we like to be a part of the conversation locally. We, 21C is locally rooted, but globally engaged through its museum programming and its food and beverage programming. So every one of our properties, um, offers cultural programming free and open to the public. Um, these are a few examples of some of our partners at the various locations. Um, annually, we host more than 2,500 um, uh, free public events, including performances, classes, lectures, and museum tour tours. This is just a, a screenshot of the last couple months from social of some of the museum activities. Um, we were doing artist talks to visit with the artists during the pandemic to see how they were um, continuing to work in the absence of interacting with people. Um, we do visiting curator series where we interview curators in the markets that we're in and they talk about some of the artists in their community that are doing great work. By the same token, our food and beverage teams um, are always locally engaged and locally inspired. That's both with vendors as well as farmers. Um, and so we, we have regional partnerships as well as national partnerships. And, here a few of those. Again, a few images from our just recent social, whether that be a partnership with a, with a, um, with a brewery or a uh, coffee roastery. Um, our teams live in those communities and they want to support those communities and, and we're, we're proud of the work that they do. So thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. Uh, I hope you all will have a chance to visit at 21C. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kevin. I think we have time for, for a couple of questions. Do we have any uh, questions for Kevin? No, oh, Tanaya. Hold on. Let me, let me give you the microphone just so we can get it on cam. Thank you. How do you balance out the nature of like being in a hotel with the nature of being in a museum? And I, I know you spoke a little bit about like how you want it to be more casual and it kind of, you know, promotes more conversation and that's cool, but like people could also be very messy or boisterous yeah. or whatever. I think it's fair. And actually when I started at 21C, I was like, what's your security in the museums? Like where are the cameras? Like where are the lines on the floor? Um, it would be disingenuous to say that we don't have issues. Like we do have issues occasionally, but it is, is few and far between. We, we have people who somehow, um, audiences who, who adjust their behavior accordingly. And um, you know, we, we think we found a nice balance with that. It hasn't been, has not been an issue. Does that answer your question? You allow red wine. We allow red wine and <laughs> delicious cocktails, correct.
I guess this question I have is similar to the one that was asked for, for Bunkhouse, because you guys are going to different areas and really trying to immerse yourself in the, in the, in the local communities, um, especially now as being part of a core. Um, do you find that as you grow, it's, it's not easy to scale and maintain that, um, the kind of the, the original vibe of 21C? I think we've, we've had the same challenges, but we've acknowledged the same challenges, which is um, we have partners on the design and consulting side that we take with us oftentimes, but we also engage with local groups. Um, and the design period, the design phase, there's sufficient time to really, we think, get to know the communities we're in and we rely on them to help us understand that. Again, we don't, we don't wanna come in and say, this is, this is what your town's all about. Um, but we do, the, the other benefit is we've, we've had the sort of yes in my backyard um, benefit of municipalities and cultural partners welcoming us and wanting to work with us, and they are helpful in connecting the dots with people that would be good partners for us and who are reflective of those communities. Okay, got a question over in the back. Can you catch one? I'm joking. So two questions, um, is the, the art, are the art installations free to the public? I know you mentioned that it's open, but do, is there a charge? No charge. Okay, then secondly, when you think of the necessary things that actually go into the guest rooms, do you try to bring some type of a artistic flavor into that, or is it just more utilitarian like I, we see in other hotels? I would say the guest room portion is most like other hotels th that you see, um, but, but with, a, with a couple footnotes to that. Um, we, we try to do at every one of our um, elevator lobbies. We have a program called Elevate where we feature the art of a local artist and that's rotating. So um, we, we build a vitrine or some sort of display in every eleva elevator lobby so um, you are engaged with art also at that moment. In the rooms themselves, historically, we've featured the art of our, our founder, Laura Lee Brown, who's a photographer and a, a painter. And so we have um, featured some of her, her work uh, throughout the guest rooms. Any other additional questions? Okay, well, Kevin, thank you so much uh, for, for presenting. And obviously, thank you again to Tanaya and Sophie.